<laughs> All right, but if you do like to drink, especially as we think about celebrating the new year, we're taking a look at one of the world's great spirits, rum. It's traditionally made from sugarcane or molasses, but up until the Revolutionary War, it was at the center of colonial life in America. But it was eventually overtaken in popularity by spirits like whiskey, vodka, and tequila. So we set out to find out why that happened and sipped our way through a range of rums, including one that's been made by the same family for more than 160 years. A taste of rum might invoke images of pirates or the memory of a bad hangover. But those tropes don't paint a full picture of the spirit. Just ask Anton Kinlock. 250 rums line the shelves of Fuchsia, his tiki bar in New Paltz, New York. This one is aged for eight years in French oak. From a French-style rum agricole, which is distilled from sugarcane juice instead of molasses, it is like an angel dancing on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> That's a great way to describe it. To a Japanese rum aged in stainless steel tanks. So it's like rice and seaweed. This doesn't even taste like rum, at least rum as I know it. Despite its diversity, rum's popularity in the United States falls short compared to that of other liquors. Its consumption declined between 2020 and 2021, clocking in at a third of vodkas. Rum is still lagging behind. Explain that to me. There is this stigma that it is naturally sweet. And that it goes in sweet drinks. Rum is not inherently sweet. It is inherently dry, like every other spirit on the market. To understand the status of rum today, we decided to unpack its beginnings and turn to mixologist and spirits expert, Shannon Mustafer. What have you made for us today? You are enjoying the plantier which is a wonderful variation on the rum punch. All right, cheers. Okay. Cheers. Okay. She explained that rum's presence in the West dates back to the 17th century. How much was rum a part of piracy on the high seas? The pirates weren't really into rum as much as they were into any commodity that they could kind of, you know, get their hands on. Rum was distilled from the waste of one of the most valuable commodities in the world at the time, sugar. Millions of enslaved people were brought to the colonies to sustain its production. The revenue that was generated by the sugar trade was equivalent to what we experienced in the age of the gold rush. So, you know, rum is tied to economics, different political shifts. By 1790, the French had brought half a million enslaved people to its colony, Saint-Domingue, now known as Haiti. Inspired by the French Revolution, they revolted too. France went to war with this tiny little island. They also went to war economically, so they kind of imposed a sanction of sorts by funding the beet sugar industry as an alternative that also impacted the rum industry. In 1804, Haiti gained its independence and the world's first black-led republic was born. Six decades later, Frenchman Dupre Barbancourt founded a rum distillery on the island. The thing that's really cool about Rum Barbancor is that the family's been able to maintain an operation in spite of all the upheaval on the island. Yeah, Delphine Gardere her. is the fifth generation of her family to become its CEO. We it met her to discuss 160 years of rum tradition over a classic Haitian meal prepared by Chef Wesley Simon at his restaurant, Zummy. First of all, I love this bottle. I love this packaging, right, because it is so Haitian. I mean, it's beautiful. How long has it been like this for this 15 years? Since the 60s. And this was actually a painting that was at the office. Wow. It's a Haitian painting by an artist called Félix Jean. Why they have ranked Barbancourt as one of the world's great rums is the method that you distill the sugar cane. We distill at a higher degree than actually the French rums. We have a very long fermentation, which gives our rum a lighter and spicier note. We know the situation that Haiti is in right now, it's terrible. Why are you still in Haiti? I have over 600 employees. We have a clinic with pediatrics. If I were to leave, then who else is going to start playing that role? Back at Fuchsia, Anton hopes to dispel customers' concerns about rum by offering them favorites with a twist. Usually I will lay down some very basic questions. What spirits do they normally enjoy? And simply substitute a rum that might hit all those targets. I've never had a rum Manhattan. Can I try one? I would love to make that. 
Cheers. That is absolutely delicious. It has all the flavor profiles of Manhattan except that one unique flavor that the rum brings to it. So hopefully we can convince people to now look at rum as a more legitimate spirit. So a couple of things to share about Barbancourt. Uh, in 2021, it won a gold medal at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. It has now won 50 medals since its founding in 1862. And I love what Delphine told me about staying in Haiti and keeping the means of production in right. Haiti. Through all the political upheaval, calamities, this company and people like Delphine are keeping the spirits alive of many, many people on the island and the diaspora. Um, it, rum has its colonial upbringings, mm -hmm. but there are people like Mark Farrell, who Michelle Miller uh, profiled, who's got a, a rum called 10 to 1. They're bringing it out of its colonial beginnings right. and into the modern era. Mm. That was a great piece. And Thank I love you. that you're, you're highlighting rum from Haiti. Right. I mean, it, it, you know, one of the things that the rum that comes from Haiti, rum agricole, and many other rums are like cognacs. Yeah. They're not necessarily meant to be mixed in cocktails. Right. Uh, They're meant to be I sipped. I did not know the that. The same way you sip a cognac. So we'll, have, we'll have some in February after dry January.